Welcome back to the Own Your Awkward podcast. I'm your host, Andy Vargo, and every episode we get into what has made our guests vulnerable and how they've learned how to own their awkward in order to live their best life. Stay tuned so you can hear every awkward moment in today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Own Your Awkward podcast. I'm your host, Andy Vargo, and today we have a very special guest with is going to tell us about brain health, Amy Podolsky. How are you doing, Amy? I'm doing great, Andy. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me on. I'm, I'm psyched to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to have you on. And, and just for everybody uh, that's listening, Amy and I just met on the phone. We, uh, she listened to a, a good friend of mine, Zach Messler. He was on one of our episodes a little while back, and she said, hey, if you're open to learning about taking care of your brain, I'd love to be on your show. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it was insightful. I've learned a lot from the information you sent me. Excellent. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation. Oh, for sure. So why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you have going on so that uh, we can get to know you. Sure. So I am an Ageless Grace brain health educator, and I'm also a national trainer. And it's basically brain health. It's it's sort of a neuroplasticity is a it's become much more of a buzzword nowadays, um, and that is the ability of the brain and the nervous system to be able to change over time. So at at an, bleh, I'm sorry at, at any age or at any level of cognitive ability, we always have, um, we're always able to um, create new connections in the brain, which is really good news. So we used to think, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks and your brain is static and once you lose it, you lose it. Uh, Neuroscience has thinks otherwise and has proven otherwise. And and the idea today is that uh, we can, in fact, change our brains. And that is often by doing things that we don't know how to do, so introducing new things and and, or doing things that we already know how to do but in a different way. So maybe if I'm a a righty, I'm going to write left-handed just changing it up a little okay. bit, and that's what stimulates the brain, and that's what stimulates neuroplasticity in, in a very um, in a very simple sense, you know, to, to, to sure. put it in, in simple terms. So the idea that, that, you know, I grew up with where, you know, if you smoke the wrong thing or watch the wrong show, you're going to lose those brain cells forever. So that is, is turning into a myth, or that's, that's been proven wrong. Yes, it has. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that, that is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's good news. It's very good news. Um yeah, so it's that we there's always um we used to think it was a limited number of, you know, uh let's say neurons. There's only so many amounts, you know, so many of them and then once they die off, that's it. But in fact, the brain is it's it's constantly regrowing and and um Today, it's considered, I mean, it's almost like how astrophysics used to be, like mind-boggling, like how can that be? And that's actually what what the field of neuro neuroscience is like today. Like the more we learn about the brain, the le- we realize the less we know about the brain. And I should also say as a disclaimer, I'm not a neuroscientist. Um, so I, you know, I just want to put that out there that I'm not speaking from the the science side sure. I've, I've certainly studied um a lot about it and have read a lot about it and through my ageless grace training i've learned a lot about it um so just just want to put that out there um but it's yeah, it's and, very and I, yeah no i'm sorry i was i love that name ageless grace and when you just mentioned that that the brain continues to grow at any age Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. So, so there's there's Me not too. a cap. You don't have to think, oh, I, I, you know, I passed my prime. I'm out of college or whatever. I, I'm no longer learning. You can exactly. keep growing your brain. But that's a really good point that you make that about, you know, if you're out of college, because actually, 
what happens is when we're kids, kids are outside, they're playing, they're climbing trees and swinging baseball bats and and um, all kinds of imaginary games, they're actually creating neuropathways. They're actually firing up their brains. And in, in Ageless Grace Brain Health, we joke around and say, you know, I bet your mother never said, go outside and fire up some neurons. But that's in oh, fact right. what, what was happening. That's, that is what's happening. And as we get older, um, typically, uh, you, you just said it right around college, you know, we stop playing and we start working and we get more serious and somehow play gets, you know, it falls by the wayside. But that's actually um, where it's at. That's, that's it's, it's <clears throat> learning how to do new things, trying new things, bringing in and, and the spirit of um, – joy and play and wonder. So that's actually what we do in brain health fitness is we're trying to bring that back to people um, to get back into that spirit of play. So is is a lot of it more about the playful environment and the, the relaxation of playing or is it more about imagination or trying new things that you haven't tried before? Is there, or is it a combination of all? What is it that, that is the, the best recipe for brain health, I guess? Well, the short answer is yes to all of the above. (laughs) Um, That, so it is, it is playing and it's play taking 10 minutes a day to play. And that includes um, being physical. So, um, you know, we, we move the body and we move the brain and we move the brain and we move the body. You know, it's, they're very much Mm -hmm. intertwined. Um, so it's about getting the brain benefits and also the body benefits. And that is, again, simply by 10 minutes a day sitting in a chair and playing. So it could okay. be like you, like you had asked about, you know, doing things that we don't know how to do. So let's do this. Wherever you are, <laughs> you're going to make a circle with your right hand. I'm just making a circle. Okay. And now I want you to make a triangle with your left foot. Oh, wow. <laughs> How's it going, right? <laughs> right. right. That's, That's usually, I'm, okay. I'm making, a, I'm making a half a triangle on my right hand, and I don't know what's happening with my foot. <laughs> right, 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 exactly, exactly. I think I just got an octagon or something. It's, it's, um, but the important piece is staying with it. So your brain doesn't know if, you've, if you actually got it, quote, unquote, or not. It's the act of trying that's how neurons that's how you're firing up the neurons in your brain you're making those connections because you're Mm. trying your brain is trying to do something it doesn't know how to do so and it's also fun i mean that that was one what's that oh go ahead no go ahead are you feeling are you feeling better already andy are you well i was going to say from from that (laughs) exercise i identified that apparently the feeling of confusion is the feeling of brain growth Ah, excellent. You know, at at least for me, it's like. Yeah, no, for yeah, me too. Like, no, oh. that's excellent. That's exactly it. And that's where I love the whole awkward piece because I don't know about you, I feel really awkward a lot of times when I'm, whether I'm mm-hmm. teaching a class or whether I'm practicing my own 10 minutes a day, it can be awkward because it's like we're trained to, I'm, I'll speak for myself, I want to get it quote unquote, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. I want to do it right. And there's that perfectionist piece. And with this, once, once I get something, I move on to some to introduce something new. So, you know, let's say, you know, now we're going to try making a, a, a horizontal line with one elbow and your nose is going to make a circle. You know what I mean? So it's, it's constantly switching it up and which, yeah, which is, which is awkward. So there's, Ageless Grace, there's 21 really simple tools, and they're all fun, and they have, um, you know, different silly names, and that's to remind us to be playful. And so that one, you know, we just did together was Gentle Geometry, and that's okay. where you're, just, you're <laughs> like making that. different – yeah, so it's, it's fun. You know, one is called Zoology, and it's 
uh, they all have a primary benefit. So the primary benefit of what we just did, um, gentle geometry, is neuroplasticity. So actually you're, you're very specifically tr changing, you're trying to change your brain by, by introducing new things. Um, but they're all, you know, there's zoology, there's front row orchestra where we're playing different instruments. There's, um, and they, again, they all have different benefits. So um, front row orchestra is like multi-skilling, doing different things, not multitasking, but multi-skilling. One is a spaghetti spine where you're, you're moving your spine around and getting mobility in all 26 vertebrae. So it, it, runs, it runs the gamut, and they all have um, primary benefits, and they all have brain and body benefits. So it's kind of like a, a two-for-one, if you will. You get to, you get to play, or three, because you get to play and have fun, and you also get to, um, you know, fire up your brain, and it, it really helps um, the body to feel, to feel good. It, it helps with the... Um, it's like a functional fitness. Right. And, and, and I guess one thing that I, I have seen some studies where, and, and I'm sure this comes up quite a bit, as to whether or not video games are good or bad for the brain. Mm. And, and, and as you're talking, I'm thinking, well, anything with limited, you know, because kids are like, oh, hey, I saw a study. I can video game for four hours, but but if it's the same thing that you've always been doing, it's nothing different, and you're not mm -hmm. trying anything Wait. different. So, yes, you know, as opposed to if you never play a video game and then you try to do it, you're actually stretching yourself a little bit. So maybe there's a benefit to try something you haven't done, and it's mm -hmm. okay that it happened to be a video game, versus right. I'm going to sit here and and you know play whatever the game of the day is for 16 hours because I heard it was good. <laughs> Right, right. You just, you, my son came home from school today. He's um, he's a freshman in high school, and he said he was telling me about there's this new game everybody's into, and I'm like, oh great, <laughs> can't wait to hear about that one. And it's called, I want to say, Bit Life. Or, okay. Yeah, I think it's Bit Life or Bit Real. No, I think it's Bit Life. And so he's showing it to me, and it's basically. He's like, you know, you're going through your life. Like, you know, I'm going to borrow $20 from my mom, and then I'm going to invest it in blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what the hell? I, I just <laughs> I kept saying, what's what's the point of the game? Like, you, you could actually right. be living, too, you know. So, um, oh, but, exactly. yes, I, I, yeah, I agree. And also what – it's in, it incorporating the physical piece too, which I think with when kids are sitting there and adults too, uh, I spend a lot of time on my computer or scrolling my newsfeed or, you know, and it's just yeah. that repetitive movement. And so we want to be moving, you know, stimulating the brain and also moving the body. Right. Well, and that's, it, it's interesting just as you're talking about it, I'm, I'm starting to think about the brain more as a muscle and actually working it as a muscle that you don't think about physically moving your brain around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, that's it's it's exa it's just like working any other muscle. We have to use it, and we have to introduce um, st stimulation and um, challenge, challenge in order to to get stronger. So that's a great that's a right. great analogy. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> well, and so, and and I don't know if this is, if if being awkward it has it relates anything to you with being brainy or not, but, um, but getting into being a brain health coach and, um, correct me if I if I phrase that wrong, but, but no, focusing no, no, on brain great. health with people mm -hmm. is um. Was that an awkward situation, or what was the awkward thing you had to get over with to, to get to where you are today? That's a great question. So it's exactly what I probably said 10 minutes ago when I, you know, it was like, well, I'm not a brain health scientist, and I'm not a, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's feeling like, can I really be talking about this? Like, I my background is in communications, and I love dance and I love um, I love to write and how like feeling like I'm not legit you know like this this mm -hmm. is I'm a fraud that imposter syndrome thing so I think that's what 
can be awkward for me until I realize, you know, take a breath and, you know, this is, I have studied this. I get this. I feel passionately about this and I enjoy sharing it. So, um, you know, it's like kind of quieting the, the voices in my own head of, you know, the inner critic, whatever you want to call it, of saying, well, right, you're yeah. not, this isn't, yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think that well, so much, yeah, go ahead. No, we we do that so much to ourselves where, you know, we, we don't feel good enough to be in a position that we're in or to be sharing the information that we have, but then we don't give ourselves credit for, how much more you know than thousands of others in this particular category. Right, you, you right. Know, it, it doesn't have to be that you're a neuroscientist or a, a the expert in the category, mm-hmm. but you can still help spread the message to so many other people that, that might not have the access to that person. Or you might say it in a way that resonates better with someone who, who isn't trying to talk to a scientist. Yeah, yeah. That's That's kind of where I'm netting out in general and what I'm noticing for myself is that, you know, it's okay to take risks. It's okay to have a beginner's mind. It's okay to, um, you know, nothing is, is that original in terms of content. I'm not talking about the brain health piece. I'm saying like me sure. putting myself out there. Other people have done that. But it's what I have to say and, Andy, what you have to say. And, like, when I heard your story, I was so moved by that. And that, for me, is what is where it's at. It's people living their truth and putting themselves out there, taking the risk to say, you know what, I feel really passionate about this. And having the confidence to say, yeah, no, my voice Yep, my voice needs to be heard, just like you said. If yeah. you never know who it's going to touch, so uh, and I also exactly. am a big believer of fake it till you make it, right? So it might not uh-huh, feel sure. comfortable, but you know what? Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Well, and and so I'm curious when you when you started going down this road and you had that feeling of being an imposter, mm-hmm. how was that the first few times you were? sharing this, this story with people or trying to coach them or teach them about brain health, were you afraid they'd ask you a question that you wouldn't know the answer to or that you'd be exposed? How did that feel at, at first? Awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awkward <laughs> and, and fear. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And, and fear too, you know, fearful because, yeah, like I'm a fraud and everyone's going to know. That's that sort of, mm-hmm. that's the that mentality. So there's that fear around it and, um. Yeah, and also practicing what I I do a lot of speaking, like a lot of um, workshops and presentations, really introducing people to ageless grace, brain health, fitness, and and what it is. And so, yeah, I have spoken in rooms where people are kind of looking at me like I have three heads and. Um, you know, and I'm trying to, and the more, you know, when I get nervous, the more I'm like trying to prove something and, and it's uncomfortable. It's just uncomfortable. I love it when luckily this, this program is a lot of fun and I would say nine out of 10 times, maybe nine and a half out of 10 times, it's really delightful and people are enjoying it or at least they're pretending to and it's laughing and it's it's a feel good you know there's great music and and all of that stuff but um but there are those times where people are you know just staring back at me and and i gotta keep playing because the same the the bigger i think the bigger i get in terms of my movement or my how wacky or how fun i'm gonna how much fun i'm gonna have i think (laughs) that invites that invites other people to let let loose as well. So I know I have to keep it up and yeah, sometimes I'm just sitting there laughing at my own jokes. Luckily that doesn't right. happen <laughs> very often at all, but still it's, you know, it's like you're a comedian. So did you ever yeah. go out there and right people aren't vibing on your jokes and I don't know. Have yeah, you had and, that? and it's the worst thing because laughter is contagious. Mm-hmm. And that's like when I'm on <laughs> when 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 we're at the comedy club and and the people didn't sit close enough together because there's some nights where it's an open mic and so it's open seating and mm-hmm. nobody wants to sit in the front 
And But what happens is not so much that they're not up front, it's that they're too spread out. So they don't hear the oh. neighbor laugh. And and so, you know, when you, like, it's just like what you said, when you do the wacky arm movement or you do different things that are, you're letting yourself get a little crazy, it's contagious to everybody else in the room. So mm-hmm. it's that, it's not even just laughter is contagious, it's goofiness or being relaxed. It's right. people pick up on the vibe. Right, right. Yeah, I so get that. Yep. Yeah, and it's also we we were talking about how childhood play is so much a part of this, and kids that are like six, seven years old and under, they mm-hmm. they're not worried about what people are thinking. They're not worried about does this seem foolish. I saw the other day a um, it was a Friday and the, a school bus had, I was parked behind a school or I was driving behind a school bus and it stopped and. A little girl got off, you know, a bunch of kids got off. And this one little girl, she had her unicorn backpack. And she's, like, swinging it in the air and, like, skipping. (laughs) And (laughs) and I thought, that's how I feel on a Friday afternoon, too. But when do we lose that? You know, she's not worried about, like, am I making an ass out of myself here? Right. So, so, um, yeah, so it it all, yeah, it's like that. that is, it's so good for us to do that though to just let ourselves be who we are and to have some fun without worrying about what does it look like what will people think oh exactly i was just with the roundtable group last night and we were talking about you know where is that point where people become self-conscious because it's somewhere between the beginning of middle school and and high school where Mm -hmm. people just walk in to stop stop losing that all of a sudden you have these inhibitions that you you can't get past and you don't yeah. skip down the road when the bell rings anymore mm-hmm. but what's so unfortunate is it doesn't come back for most people you 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 put yourself in that cell that you never get out of because these are the rules you've set for yourself mhm yes yep they're like and, the and now we know that we're stopping yeah. our yeah, no, we, now we know that it's stopping our brain from growing. So That's right, worse. that's right. So all the more yeah. reason, get out there and do your thing. Oh, exactly. So we've got the links to Ageless Grace um, in the description as well as your LinkedIn profile. Um, oh, is there great. anything in particular you want um, people to find or, or check out or look out? What, what are some things people should should be looking for? I would say the TED Talk that Denise Medved did. Denise is the creator, founder of Ageless Grace. And she gave a phenomenal TED Talk that I don't know if I can I can give you the link or we can somehow. Yeah, I have the link from you. You did send me the link because um, I watched mm-hmm. that when you first uh, sent it to me. And I still have that. I can load that in here as well. That would be great. That's because that I feel like she explains it so brilliantly boils down what what brain health is all about what neuroplasticity is all about and then she actually goes into to playing so it's you get to see mm-hmm. it in action also but it also makes sense it I, I tell people it's a lot like chocolate like you you can't describe it it's delicious you just have to try it so mm-hmm. you get to actually See it in action, and um, I, I would say everybody watch that TED Talk. It's just, it's really, literally mind blowing. And um, right, yeah, yeah. And if you want to learn more, please get in touch with me. Um, it's uh, from what I have seen. Uh, I've been doing this for four years now, and it is a joy to practice. It's a joy to teach. And um, just the results, I feel so much sharper in my brain-wise. I, I worked at a summer camp for many years, and, um, you know, I so I'm in my 40s, and I worked with a lot of 20-somethings who I love, and they're amazing, but they're quicker than me just because they're quicker mm-hmm. than me. <laughs> sure. And I and I felt like when I first started practicing Ageless Grace, that first summer when I went back to camp, I felt like, oh, I can keep up with things. Like I can keep up with 
whatever it you know in a meeting or if some whatever's happening um i was a supervisor so um a lot of different parts of you know diff- you know what what's happening with this group and what's happening with that person or this counselor or that so i felt right. like i could keep up and it it really is totally a result of of practicing you know training my brain to get to get yeah. sharper well and, and i've noticed that that I'm in my 40s as well, which I think becomes the, I think it's a decade of the realization of your body where, uh, <laughs> where you notice yeah. things. And, and a big thing for me has been that I notice based on what I eat, if I don't drink enough water, you know, things that are healthy, if I, if I don't eat healthy foods, if I don't drink enough water, I notice that sluggishness in my brain. And I notice that, you know, you just don't feel as good or have as much energy. And I think when you, I think that's important to address because when you think about brain health and, you, you know, why do you want to have a, a, a bigger brain necessarily? Well, it's not necessarily because you're trying to, you know, solve some some mathematical equation at 90, right. but enjoying life and being able to keep up and, and get more out of the things around you with more detail is, yes. is really what it's about. Yeah. And cognitive decline is actually the number one health concern like worldwide you know it used to be uh, cancer heart disease yeah but but losing brain function because the you know what neuroscience what neuroscientists now believe is that the brain controls uh, movement of the body so if you're declining cognitively then you're also you know you may not be able to yeah so so that's um that's that other that other piece of it that um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really remarkable. I feel like I just went off and, topic and it, there. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, it, but it makes sense if, if the brain is kind of the, the gears behind the wheels of your body, if that's not mm-hmm. turning, then your body's not going to stay physically fit enough to stay physically healthy. Exactly. So it, 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 it go, they sense. go hand in hand. Yep. So practice, so play games. And that's the thing. Who doesn't love to play? Yeah. Right. That's fun. Ten so, minutes a day. That's um, all it takes. Yep. Right. And think about how much time we waste on social media or just on hold on the phone. You know, there's mm-hmm. all these times where you could find you could easily find ten minutes. It's not even fifteen or twenty. Right. So. Exactly. And we stop at ten minutes. You know, after that, it's like okay, ten minutes is up. Get up and go about your. I I do it first thing in the morning and. I I don't drink coffee. I do ageless grace. You know, it's like it gets me going. It's like the first thing I do. And yeah, yeah. And I just feel sharper. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we're just down to a couple minutes here, but what is the last bit of wisdom? You've you've imparted us with so much, so uh, no pressure, but but what's that (laughs) last thing thing you want to leave, leave our listeners with that they, they should know? I would say, I would just encourage everybody listening and everybody everywhere, do, you do you, as, they, as the young people say. Uh-huh. Be who you are and, and live it out loud because the world needs to hear what you have to say. Pushing past the awkward and pushing past right. the discomfort of what will people think and really getting into that I. I I always like to say, channel your inner seven-year-old, like that, that mm-hmm. spirit of, that. of just, yeah, curiosity and wonder and not worrying about what do people think because we're all, we all have an important story to tell. You know, we all have a bright, beautiful light that deserves to shine. So I would say, oh, exactly. you know, taking risks. Yeah. Yeah. And, I love that. That's beautiful. And I, I, I just love that idea of just harnessing your inner child. That's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff because I think that's who we are at our core. You know, that's our essence before the world, you know, shitty things happen yeah. and, and suddenly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, be who you yeah, are. But, you're right. It's like, yeah, just go back to your core. Well, Amy, mm-hmm. I so appreciate you educating us today and taking the time out of your day to share your awkward um uh, it was Definitely my pleasure. Thank go you. Back. 
Yes, thank you. And definitely, listeners, uh, go back into the description and click on the links to reach out to Amy and to learn about how to keep your brain healthy. And check back next time for the next awkward, the next episode of Own Your Awkward. Thanks, Amy. Take care. Thanks, Andy. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening in for today's show. Be sure to visit awkwardcareer.com to continue your journey. And of course, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends so they can find their awkward side and learn how to own it.